Joel, how do I get new members into my club? Joel, how do I get members to stay in my club? Those are the biggest questions that I get asked on a daily basis. How do I get members to my club? Number two, how do I keep members in my club? And number three, is Elvis Presley still alive? I have answers to two. Today, we're going to talk about the one thing that is needed to build your club and keep your attention at the same time. It is your ultimate, your best recruiting tool, okay? Now, your best recruiting tool when it comes to building membership and keeping retention is prepared meetings. Yep, you guessed it. No hoopla about social media, YouTube, or anything that you might think yet. Your biggest recruiting tool is prepared meetings. I'm going to give you an example. Okay, look at this cake. Mmm, Betty Crocker, moist and rich, right? Myself, personally, I'm not a cook, so I can't cook a cake from scratch or bake a cake from scratch. I probably can, but it's going to be hit or miss whether it's going to come out super moist. However, if I go to the store and I buy this box, a Betty Crocker Duncan Highs cake, yellow cake mix just like that. On the back of that, well, first of all, it's going to come with a pre-measured amount of cake mix. On the back of that, it's going to have instructions. It's going to tell you, or it's going to tell me how much water to use. It's going to tell me how much oil to use. It's going to tell me how many eggs to put in. It's going to tell me how to mix it in the bowl. It's going to tell me what type of uh, baking pan I should use. It's going to tell me what temperature to preheat the oven. It's going to tell me how long to preheat the oven. It's going to tell me how long to put that pan in there with that cake mix in there, how long to keep it in it. And when I take it out, it's going to also tell me what do I have to do before I put that icing on there. Now, if I do every single thing, just like the instructions say, that cake will come out super moist and it will look and taste just like, well, you can't taste it on the box, but it will look exactly like it does on the box and it will be just as described. Now, your recipe for a really good meeting is going to be an manual called a Toastmaster wears many hats. Now, in that manual, just like with that box of cake mix, it's going to tell you what do you have to do from Toastmaster all the way down to timer and every single role. Everyone that has responsibility in a meeting, it tells you what to do before the meeting. It tells you what to do during the meeting. It even tells you what to do after the meeting. That's for every single role or every single participant. In the meeting. Now, for you club officers, we didn't forget about you. Master your meetings will do the same thing for you. As a club officer, regardless of what your position is, it tells you every single thing you have to do before the meeting, during the meeting, and after the meeting. Now, when you do that, that's going to increase your conversion rate which is why we're doing all of this in the first place. We want to keep the conversion rate high. Well, what does that mean, Joel? What that means is this. Just because you invite someone to a meeting, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to join. It doesn't. Whether it be your brother, your sister, cousin-in-law, it really doesn't matter. When they come to your meeting, a lot of times we take for granted that you know a, a people are going to join, and it's not. Whether they're joining us is going to be based on what they see when they get there. Now, having a high conversion rate, which your ultimate or your your most your, your recruiting tool is, you have to be able to take advantage of the gimmies, the freebies. Who are the freebies? You know who they are. The freebies are the people that sit. They hear about Toastmasters some kind of way. They do their Google search. The website, the Toastmasters website, is designed to sell. It is designed to sell. That's how they end up at your club. They do their Google search. They do some reading. And then what keeps popping up? Find a club. Find a club near you. And they do that. 
You next thing you know, you have people walk into your club. You don't know them. They don't know you. You didn't do anything to get them now. Get them there. Now, whether they join or not, it's going to be based on what they see. So your meeting has to be prepared. Once they get there, it's too late to try to plan it. Your meeting has to be prepared beforehand so you can take advantage of the give me's. While you're trying to determine what's the best way for you to bring members to your club, you're always going to have these members come in just to give me. They went to their website. You have to be able to take advantage of those. And the best way to take advantage of those is your meeting itself has to be extremely prepared. So it looks like the, the, the finished product that they see on the website. All of those smiling faces, right? Okay. Now, the last thing is this. You have to actively seek out members actively. Vice president of membership, you have to seek it out. Well, what works? I can tell you to try social media. I can tell you to try interviews. I can tell you to try speech crafts. I can tell you to try open houses. Everybody is going to say, or oh, everyone on this call right now will give a reason. That's what, well, you know, we can't do that because we're a corporate club. We can't do this because of this. And that may be true. But the thing is, you have to have a bread and butter or go to some way based on your demographic, based on your coach, based on your, your location, based on all the factors that are specific to you, you have to find your go-to strategy, which means you try to shotgun approach. Try a lot of different things and see where you get traction. And if you don't know what your strategy is now or you don't have a go-to right now that you know you can go to every single month to get guests to come to your club, you got 12 months to figure that out. You got 12 months because going forward, you want to be able to pass that strategy, whatever it is. First of all, you want to work good till you get good at it, but you want to be able to pass that on to the incoming team. So membership should never be a problem because you found out of all of the different different methodologies out there, all of the different methods out there, you found something that worked for your demographic specific to your club. This is how we bring guests into our club in order to be converted. It works every single time or works really good every single time. Okay. Now let's go on to the next one. The next one is retention. Okay. Joel, how do I keep members into my club? Okay. Your job is not to keep members in your club. I'm from South Louisiana, and here in South Louisiana, kidnapping is illegal. So you're not here. Your job is not to keep members into your club. Your job is to provide a supportive and positive learning experience. That's it. That's it. A supportive and positive learning experience in which they can take advantage of if they choose to take advantage of it. Your job is not to keep anybody anywhere. As I said, I don't know about where you're at, but here, Kidnapping is illegal. Okay, I will tell you this though. Your new member orientation is extremely important. It's one of the six key areas of club quality. You will cover that in the moments of truth. Your area director will also cover that on the visit. Why? Because it's so important. The question that I get or the response that I get is, you know, people come in and, you know, they may stay six months or they may stay a year and they leave. It's like a revolving door. That points to your new member orientation. That points to your new member orientation. Maybe they were not oriented. Maybe they just, you know, they didn't feel like they belong there, but I'll cover that later. When I meet with someone for a new member orientation, I don't bring any Toastmaster material with me. I don't ask them at Toastmaster. There's only one thing that I want to find out. I want to find out why they are there. And the reason I don't ask them in Toastmasters is because I have a saying. If you ask a Toastmasters question inside of Toastmasters, you're going to get a Toastmasters answer, which means that if you ask them before a meeting, during a meeting, after a meeting, anywhere in that setting, you ask them, why did you join Toastmasters? What are they going to tell you? I joined Toastmasters because I want to become better at communication and leadership. That's not what I want to hear. I get them away from that on a different date, totally away from the meeting. And I ask them that same question. And what you're going to find out is you're going to get you a different answer. And that's the answer you want. How do you know when you got a good answer? How do you know when, they, when you have something to work with? When they give you an emotional response as to why they are there, then you have 
their reason. Then you can tie that to Toastmasters. Then you can show them how they can accomplish their personal goals. One of the stories I used to tell a long time ago, before I had any skills, I didn't know nothing about nothing. Somehow I was talking to this new member. Now, don't get me wrong. I had all of my Toastmaster stuff then, but everything fell in the right place because the conversation took off somewhere else because he and I found a common ground. And I asked him, why was he joining Toastmasters? And he told me this. He said, I quit high school to go to work for this company. He said, I worked for that company all my life. He had been there over, I think it was like 22 years at that time. And he said, they gave me a promotion to sales. I wanted the promotion, but I didn't realize how terrified I was of speaking in front of people. He said, the first time I tried it, he said, I, I ran out the room. The second time I barely got through it. And this, this is my job. I can't let my family down. So I have to try to, I, I have to try to fix this. If I don't, you know, he said, I'm, I'm going to quit my job and I'll just find something else to do. And I thought for a minute, because I could see, I could see the emotion in his face. And I said, you know what, Chip, before I let you quit your job, it's going to be over my dead body. And I was extremely, didn't know how I was going to do it. But the only thing I did know was that I wanted to help him. And I said, bring your presentation. This was back in the legacy program. I said, we got, we got 10 times. We're going to divide it up and we're going to work on it from 10 different angles. But we're going to conquer this. And we did. That's how you keep members in. That's new member orientation. Now, remember what I said. If you ask a Toastmaster question inside of Toastmasters, you're going to get a Toastmasters answer, right? That also goes for people that leave. If a vice, a club officer calls, gets his list of, gets his list of members, and I'm going to call him and say, hi, how are you? Why don't you come on back? Or why did you leave in the first place? They're going to give you that Toastmaster answer, which is what? Well, you know, I got busy at work or I just got too much on my plate. No. Call them outside of that environment. I've called a lot of them. There's two things that I found that would be consistent with a lot of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And that is this. Number one, they felt like they didn't belong. Number two, no one was there to help them that all points toward new member orientation. Now, how about the person that's been there for a while? How do we keep them in? How do we look at retention for everyone? We talked about people that just started. How about someone that may have a DTM already or working toward a DTM where they're, they're passing, they're no longer a new member, okay? Here we go. Mentoring them for their personal goals. And this is what I mean. Give you another example. His name is Quincy. Love Quincy. Quincy came in. I was I helped him through the new member program. Understands Toastmasters. Exceed doing very very well. Progressing in Toastmasters, he's progressing. But that's not why he came in. People don't come to Toastmasters just to be in Toastmasters. So I asked him what his goals were. He said, "I want to be a." He wanted to work in HR, human resource. He worked for uh, a helicopter company in the oil and gas industry. He was a dispatcher. He said, I want to work in HR. I said, okay, great. One of my favorite tools is the member interest survey, item 403B. And what that form does, as of right now, this is June, I think most clubs, according to the Club Leadership Handbook, should be doing it right now, is get you all your members to fill out the 413B form. What the 4013B form does is allows every single person to say, okay, what is it that I'm going to work on this year? What is it that I want to accomplish this year? And then ask a lot of very valuable information for you club officers, like if they want to compete in contests. They won't be part of committees, that type of stuff. You find all that stuff out from them. But if a lot of times you can pair people up and you can get a lot, you can have people, even if you don't have a, a robust mentoring program, you can use the accountability or the buddy system. You and I, we're going to work together. Our industries are the same or we're in the same industry or take it anywhere you want to go with it. But in our particular club, and me, for example, I was never, I, I, I don't know anything about helicopters. I don't know anything about HR, but I was just mentor. So this is what I did. We had a member that was in our club. He had been in our club for over 20 years. Didn't come to any meetings or anything. 
But he was in HR. He had been in HR over 20 years, 23 years. Not only did he never come to any meetings, he didn't even live in the state. He had got transferred to New Jersey. But he was in HR. So I sent him an email. Hey, hey man, this, <laughs> this is Joel. I have a new member here, young member that's really interested in being in HR. That's his, that's his career goal. That's what he's working toward. No, you haven't been to meetings in a while. I didn't really say that, but would you have time to talk to him? And you know what he told me? Yes. He said, yes. <laughs> so I connected them via email. They had a long conversation. Got back with Quincy and they gave him all of the things, all of the traits, everything that he needed to know, everything that he needed to work on, everything that he needed to study to have on his resume to look good when he goes to apply for HR position. Guess what? Quincy now works in HR. That's a win-win. The way you keep people in Toastmasters or the way you improve, I shouldn't say keep, because remember, <laughs> that's illegal. To increase your retention, that's the key. Personal progression. A person has to be able to tie their personal progression in their career, in their life, in their family, back to Toastmaster. That what makes it valuable to them when they can see personal progression in their lives. So there you have it. The way that you build your membership is through strengthening your ultimate recruiting tool, which is your meeting, prepared meeting where every single person knows what they're doing. The way you increase your retention rate is by simply um, enhancing your new member orientation as well as your mentoring. Even if it's not formal, remember this, there's always someone, whether it be in your club, it can be in your area, division, or your district that has that specialty that they're looking for in their career, not only in pathways, but in their career. That's what makes it valuable to them. Now, I've had a great time so far, but I want you to do one thing for me. And I think this is really important. Before you start setting the world on fire, June 1st, before you finish or even start, I don't know where, depending on where you are, your club success plan, that's something I want you to do for me. I want you to commit. I want you to commit to each other as a team. I want you to show force as a team. Now, there's a big misconception, I think, in leadership that leadership only works if everybody's best friends. That's not the case. Toastmasters doesn't say, or the program is not about, we're going to make you the type of leader that everybody likes, or you have to like everybody. That's not it. Toastmasters' mission is to make you a better communicator and a better leader. It empowers people to become better communicators and better leaders. It doesn't say that you have to be best friends. What you do have to do is be willing to communicate. So I'm going to ask you, as a team, communicate with one another. Never put any solution or task before your team, before as, as, as people. Before I'm a regional advisor, before anyone is a district director, program quality director, club growth director, before you're a division director, before you're an area director, before you're a club officer, you're a basic member. And every single member has the inalienable right of integrity, service, mostly pulling in respect and excellence. Respect means that we don't have to agree, but we do have to communicate. Communicate to each other when times get hard. Be, would, be willing to have those tough communications. Not argue, but be willing to have those tough communications. Communicate with each other. Be accountable to each other. Learn from one another. Make mistakes together. But most importantly, stay together. Show your strength. If you show your strength, your members will see it. And that's what you want. You want them to see your strength. You want them, you don't have to be perfect. If you make mistakes, yeah, let them see you make mistakes. 
Let them see you also correct it. Let them see you learn from it. That's where the real growth is. That's when it's going to become valuable to them. It's when they know that they don't have to be perfect. But make a commitment right now as a team to each other that we're going to grow together, we're going to learn together, and we're going to achieve together. And if you do that, I promise you're going to have the best year you possibly can. Thank you very much. I think I got to go. I think I see Elvis.